found? And you believed them? Do you have any idea how long we've been fighting those bastards? Ugh, Crocker will have a field day with this. He'll want to establish diplomatic relations with them for Pete's sake. But we've got more important matters to attend to. The President is due to arrive soon, and we're sure the Legion won't waste such an opportunity. I want you to assist the security detail we've prepared for the President. His safety is critical to maintaining the men's fighting spirit. Go up to the visitor's center and speak to Ranger Grant. He's in charge of security during the President's visit. Dismissed. I've heard of you. I'm glad you're here to help us out. This is a delicate matter, and we need all the help we can get from people we can trust. We've got a lot to do to prepare for the President's visit, and not much time. Once we start, we'll be on a strict timetable. Are you ready? Good. The President doesn't arrive until tomorrow. Get some rest. I'll brief you in the morning. Glad you could join us. Most of my men are already on duty, and the crowd has already started gathering outside. We've got a busy day ahead of us. The plan is to get through today without the shit hitting the fan. So I'll be overseeing the security team personally, and keeping in constant contact with people over the radio. It's a good bet that the Legion is gonna try something today, so we have to be prepared for anything. We'll do whatever it takes to get the President through this visit in one piece. President Kimball is arriving shortly. If you want to do any last-minute security sweeps or take a look around for anything suspicious, do it now. Once you're ready, meet me outside on the observation deck. But don't take too long. Wish I could have been there I to miss see Caesar die. What an asshole. I'm not sure I'll ever learn everything there is to know about this place. Those Legion and League troops are bad blood. Hey, you haven't seen my friend around here, have you? His name is Ben, and he's an engineer. We were supposed to meet up so we can watch the President's speech together. But he hasn't shown up yet. Okay. Well, I guess I'll just keep waiting. Sorry to bother you. Smart move for the Kings to back down. They didn't know who they were met. Have you finished your security sweep? Well, hurry it up. Only engineers and authorized personnel. We haven't seen anybody in a while. Maybe the monsters have stealth suits too. Time to talk right now. Be invisible. Have you finished your security sweep? Looks like that's his vertebrate coming right now. It's showtime. Let's not mess this up. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some security procedures to oversee. 
We're okay on stim packs. Okay. Medic supplies adequate. off and clear the channel. I'll be damned if the president dies on my watch because you were screwing around. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you for coming out here today for this very special occasion. It is my pleasure to introduce to you the, the president, president of the, of the new, new California, California Republic, Republic, Aaron Kimball. Time to go. Who have come, come so far to have the call to service put forth by the Republic? Was that all? Report? Damn it. I can't believe the Legion actually got someone past our security. Good job catching them. I'll have a security team sweep the area to see if the Legion has any more surprises for us. I'm also canceling the President's speech. We'll have a security team get him out of here right away. But let's not relax until he's safe. job today. We got the president out safe and sound. And I couldn't have done it without you. You have my thanks. Will you love me if I help you hide? Lead the way. We're okay on stim packs. Still no luck finding my friend. He better show up soon. We're okay on medics, until we have to numb the pain. Nelson's back in our hands. Is the President safe? Good. His death could have had a major impact on morale. This whole affair was ill-advised from the start, and I, for one, am glad it's over. While you were out, General Oliver arrived and briefed all senior officers regarding a change in our strategy. I'm not at liberty to divulge what was said, but I've been instructed to send you to him immediately. He set up his camp in the office area at the south end of this power plant. Dismissed. Well, you took your sweet-ass time coming here. Let's get down to brass tacks. We need to get this thing moving if we want to keep the element a surprise. You've done some great work for us up to this point, and we're hoping to use your unique abilities to aid us once again. Thanks to the task my subordinates have delegated to you, the NCR now has a unique opportunity. We now have a chance to take the fight to those bastards on their home turf. I'm in the beginning stages of planning out an assault on the fort. I've made calls to our allies, and they're on their way to our position. Once our forces are in place and garrison here, we'll begin our assault. Sir. I don't know what happened. A bunch of Legionnaires just stormed into the power station. Into the power station? How is that possible? I don't know, sir. There was some talk of them entering through the clog intake tunnels, but I don't have any confirmation. 
On my way up here, there was some chatter about their commander, the Legate, I think he's called, set up at some kind of base on the Eastern Bank. Okay, listen here. Unless we can get some additional support, I'm gonna need you to help me resolve this situation. You need to make your way to this camp they have on the Eastern Bank and take out the Legate. That should hamstring this attack. Thanks for your support. I'll make sure the NCR emergency radio is up and running. Good okay. gracious. The Legion is using the intake tunnels to storm their way into the dam. Someone has to stop them. Okay. Be careful. Out Dealt with. Ready? Steady. Fighting. Ready, steady, fighting. Bad guys dealt with. Hostilities complete. Time to fight.
You're my best friend forever. This one looks pretty tough. Fighting over. This one looks pretty tough. Sneaking done. Fighting now. Like that? Fighting over. Well, that's the end of that. Time to fight. Show yourself and I may let you live. Like that? Cessation of hostilities complete. Show yourself and I may let you live. Like that? Cessation of hostilities complete. This one looks pretty tough. Bad guys dealt with. Was that all? Hmm. Time to fight. Was that all? This 
one looks pretty tough. Fighting over. Alpha Squad reporting in. Thanks for the support back there. We've been assigned to ensure you make it to the Legate. How can we be of assistance? Roger that. I'll have snipers move to position. Let's get going. Ready. Steady. Fighting. Keep your head down. Could be snipers around. Uh oh. Just like old times. Guys dealt with. Uh. Sneaking done. Fighting now. Fighting over. What was that?
like that. Fighting over. Are we being watched? Hmm. Fighting over. Who are you to come before me? You bear the insignia of the bear, yet you do not wear it as a soldier of the West wears it. I see you fight with words, like all beneath the flag of the bear. Let us hope your skill with weapons proves greater. So you seek quarter? Terms of surrender? Our roads into NCR are hung with the bodies of those who attempted to negotiate with us. Save your speeches. We will take Hoover Dam and move forward until our feet crush the setting sun beneath them. Hoover Dam has never seen the mass strength of the East. Only legged such as Graham who deserved the fire Kaisar blessed him with. Now I am here, and make markers of your people as the Legion carves its way west. You speak in circles. What of the East? I am the East, and I will prove it this day. The victory here shall be swift. Our forces shall take the dam, secure it, then build a road west on the bodies of the NCR. The east will hold. Once across the Colorado, nothing to rival Hoover Dam remains. Your 
weakness? You seek to thwart me by claiming the Legion is too strong for you? That does not mean we would not succeed. The East was a hard-fought campaign. Even now, Kaisar drew too much of the Legion's blood needed there for this. Hoover Dam is but a place. I will not have it be the gravestone of the Legion, whether quickly, or as you describe, slowly, by attrition. As for wisdom, there is wisdom in your words, man of the West. Know that I shall return east. I shall not remain there forever. On that day, the strength of the bear shall be tested. If the West is one day filled with ones such as you, perhaps it shall be a worthy fight indeed. My coming would have saved you, set your people free in ways they cannot see. War would have tested them, broken the weak with its violence, yet allowing the strong to arise. Violence gave you that strength, awakened you. I can see it upon your face, where two bullets left their mark. Perhaps it is unfortunate Wolpex was not here to hear your words. Something tells me you would prove more than his match. Until the day when our armies meet again, NCR, I shall wait for you on the battlefield. That's a fine bit of work back there. Truth told, I'm surprised you made it out of there in one piece. You and the dam. I'm impressed to say the least, and that's no easy thing. You've secured NCR's future. The administration sends its thanks for what it's worth. Least we could do. And seeing those shits of Caesar kicking dirt as they ran, did my heart good, let me tell you. Might see some recruitment number rise. Build some morale out in the Mojave long enough for the NCR to find its feet again. All due to you. Again, you have my thanks. And all the West, too. Once they pass it over the radio. After signing the right release forms. We clean up, take prisoners, watch Trouble the from East the Legion, anymore. Though I think they're still running, according to our scouts. After that, we'll see what happens when the dust settles and how the Mojave looks now without Caesar coming for its throat. Something tells me we better enjoy this breather while we can. And if that means Vegas, then you and the troops have earned it. Can't keep the courier spirit down, eh? Fair enough. We'll clean up here. Kind of curious how this is going to pan out in the long the run, but I guess his Canaanites and the White Legs was finally resolved. The courier's involvement had tipped the scale, shifting the fragile balance of power. After the White Legs drove the sorrows from Zion, they celebrated by destroying all traces of the valley's former inhabitants. They appealed to the Legion for assimilation, but were denied. Their failure to eradicate the new Canaanites in Grand Staircase and farther up the Colorado had not gone unnoticed. The White Legs made a half-hearted effort to find the new Canaanites, but were driven off by dead horses trained in the ways of Joshua Graham. The White Legs lost all hope of joining the Legion and disintegrated into a number of petty raiding bands 
leaving Zion Valley a polluted sister. Daniel succeeded in leading the sorrows out of Zion, as he had wanted to do from the start. The courier protected the sorrows during the evacuation, ensuring that most reached their destination unharmed. Over the weeks and months to come, Daniel would see to the sorrows resettlement in Grand Staircase. Their adjustment to their new home was not without difficulty. But eventually, the Sorrows came to accept the loss of Zion. Having helped Daniel and the Sorrows escape from Zion, the Dead Horses returned to their home at Dead Horse Point. The tribe continued to learn from the new Canaanites, and over many years built a flourishing community along the banks of the Colorado. Though the tribe's bond would endure, it was Joshua Graham's legend the dead horses would revere, not the tenets of New Canaan's faith. Already weakened by several seasons of bad trading, the Happy Trails Caravan Company was initially discouraged by the results of its expedition, the fate of New Canaan, and the evacuation of the Sorrows from Zion, made the prospect of trading seem fruitless. When Daniel told his family about the exploits of Happy Trails employee, the Courier, however, New Canaan decided to repay the company's kindness. Twice per year, New Canaanites made the dangerous journey west to trade with a company in the city of New Reno. The Happy Trails Caravan Company could not survive on such trading alone, but the New Canaanites' generosity made tough times go easier. After leading the Sorrows from their home in Zion to safety in Grand Staircase, Daniel continued to wonder if he'd made the right choice. He spent his life evangelizing the beliefs of his people to a new generation of young men and women, as his ancestors had for centuries before him. He was happy with his family, but for the rest of his life, there were nights when he awoke with sadness to find he had been dreaming of Zion. And with that, the courier walked out of the history of the tribes of Zion and back to the gathering storm of the Mojave Wasteland. As it had been in the years before the Great War, Big Mountain, the Big Empty, became home to one of the brightest minds of the 23rd century. The Courier watched over the Big Empty for years to come, caring for it and keeping its discoveries safe until they were needed to help others. Which had always been Big Mountain's purpose. Past the laboratories and science, it had always been intended as a place to build the future of all mankind. The SYNC Central Intelligence Unit was impressed by the amount of exploration the Courier had undertaken. Facilities believed lost, destroyed, or ones that had simply gotten up and walked to new locations, had been rediscovered by its intrepid new master. Internally, the artificial personality debated as to whether it preferred the old management to the new, and concluded that the Courier's thorough approach to research and investigation was admirable and worthy of its respect. The Forbidden Zone continued to be, true to its name, forbidden. No more robo-scorpions were sighted in its canyons. Big Mountain became even emptier, devoid of Dr. Mobius's proclamations forecasting the destruction of anything that dared possess sentience. Still, it is said he lived on in the equations inscribed on the floor and walls of the Forbidden Zone Dome. A cobweb tracery of symbols that told of a thousand brilliant thoughts, now lost to time. The sink atop the dome bustled with the voices of a small town, constantly chirping, arguing, and snarling at each other. Still, this all happened productively in the interests of its new owner. The SYNC Central Intelligence Unit discovered, despite its inversion code, it was comforted by the sense of community the other personalities gave it. The biological research station, obsessed with seeding everything in sight, requested a transfer to the X-22 Botanical Garden, so that it might, in its own words, 
sensually fertilize the garden's smooth contours. The garden sent back a polite refusal, saying it had prior commitments with a vault it had helped infect before the war. The book shoot continued to devour all seditious materials until it nearly choked on a paperclip. It adamantly maintained it was a Chinese paperclip, and the whole thing had been an elaborately orchestrated assassination attempt. Whatever the reason, it slowed down for a while, carefully appraising each document and clipboard that came to it. The light switches continued to bicker and flicker. This persisted until the day someone dropped a flashlight in the sink, and the two of them united in their hatred of the showboat. One of them eventually transferred to the Lightwave Dynamics plant, and began a long, unrequited affair with one of the holograms. The sink continued to ruthlessly scrub any particulate matter that came near it. Eventually, it gained access to the Magneto Hydraulics plant and nearly flooded all the big empty in an attempt to scrub the crater clean. Once it learned of the innovative toxins plant, however, it gained new purpose. It sought to develop antitoxins to flush into its drains and counteract the poisons bleeding into the soil. The toaster continued its psychotic spree reducing all appliances in range to scrap electronics and spare parts. After one of its more psychotic episodes, however, the other sink personalities decided enough was enough and dumped the toaster in a bathtub. Sparking and hissing, the toaster swore its enemies would rue the day when they had bread and no way to toast it. Muggy did his best to collect coffee cups, although in his quest, he accidentally trapped himself in Higgs Village. It might have been the end for poor Muggy. Except he found it peaceful there, tidying up the kitchens of the think tank professors back when they had been flesh and bone. Well, except for Dr. O, who was an asshole for having created Muggy in the first place. Muggy left O's house deliberately dirty, punishing the dishes and cups that lived there in blind revenge for serving Dr. O. Blind Dio Jefferson eventually discovered a new sound. Silence. It only made him more filled with the blues than before. It was rumored by the other personalities that he had a brief fling with the light switches. Although he forgot their names once too often and was soon left in the dark as punishment. Autodoc, always gentle and methodical, kept sewing up the courier in all the right places when the skin split open from repeated wear and tear. The Autodoc was just glad to have purpose again. It heard its simpler brothers and sisters who got shipped to the Sierra Madre were bored out of their skulls in that toxic dead city. In time, the Autodoc found a way to deactivate the Y-17 trauma harnesses, releasing the corpses they had held prisoner for almost 200 years. As the courier ran through the X-8 facility multiple times, the computers analyzed the test subject's movements. Rather than performing a superficial observation, they realized the subject barely knew what communism was, or even what a high school was. This confused them for a time, until the facility finally realized that its research had succeeded. So it let its cyber dogs out into the wastes to help protect small communities from physical aggression rather than communist propaganda. The infiltration program in X-13 felt spent, having repeatedly upgraded the stealth suit until it could upgrade it no more. It felt warm, fulfilled, and a bit sluggish. It realized not long after, the stealth suit had left it without so much as a note on the nightstand. So the infiltration program sent out robo-brains into the wastes, 
looking for its wayward technology. It eventually found Repcon HQ and set up a new research center, testing and murdering fiends who kept breaking into the facility. The courier, organs intact, continued onwards, a little less heavy of step, but with all the organs in the right places, as they should be. After all, brains can develop a life of their own when left to their own thoughts, and the courier's brain was more clever than most. Dr. Klein and the think tank remained alive, unaware of the world outside. They looped through their daily routine, none the wiser about the world beyond, although perhaps wiser was the wrong word. The world outside belonged to the courier, and if anyone would shape it, well, the courier had already called dibs. There is an expression in the wasteland, Old World Blues. It refers to those so obsessed with the past, they can't see the present, much less the future, for what it is. They stare into the what was, eyes like pilot lights, guttering and spent, as the realities of their world continue on around them. Science is a long, steady progression into the future. What may seem a sudden event often isn't felt for years, even centuries, to come. In the times following the Second Battle of Hoover Dam, however, Old World Blues took on a new meaning. Where once it was viewed as a form of sadness, nostalgia, it became an expression describing the potential for the future. It can be easy to see science as evil. Technology unchecked as the source of all ills, all misfortunes. With the courier at the helm, science became a beacon for the future. There was old world blues, and new world hope. And hope ruled the day at Big Mountain. We could say more, but the stories in the Big Empty speak for themselves. Now armed with the transportal ponder, the courier could return to the dome at any time and crack open the secrets of the Big Empty one by one. The sink sat vigilant, waiting for its master to return, shoes covered in Mojave dust. Only one road yet remained, and it was one the courier had to walk alone. The story is of the Sierra Madre Casino. We all have. This story is different than the others. It's all in promise of beginnings and the ending. Dog forgot himself, as did the voice that raged within him. After their passing, a new voice spoke within the mutant shell. It was difficult for the voice to remember the two it once was. There was the beast, Dog, consumed by hunger. And the other, in reverse, the one consumed by control. Both were driven by need for the other. The courier brought them together somehow, joined the two into one. All that happened at the Sierra Madre was a faint memory to the new personality, like a flickering light in the clouds of the mind. The new voice did not think of the courier again until the battle at the Divide reached his ears. The battle between the two couriers, beneath the torn skies and the old world flag, each bearing a message for the other. And the mutant prayed the courier that had saved him had been saved in return. Dean Domino. Entertainer, singer, thief, had his last show on the Sierra Madre stage. The heist he spent over 200 years planning fell apart, just as the first, by underestimating his partner's strength. Not long after the courier left the villa, the lights in the theater shut off one by one. Only Dean's hologram remained on the stage, singing silent empty room. Still, as consumed as he had been with its riches and ruin, the Sierra Madre had held him captive long ago. 
Christine, her mission complete, found new purpose as the Sierra Madre's warden. She watched over it silently, by choice. Over time, the ghost people came to see her as one of the holograms. They would watch, silently, as she walked among them. At times, Christine thought of the courier, who had kept Elijah's hand from her throat. The courier reminded her of the other courier she had met in the Big Empty, and wondered if the two had found each other at last. She did not think of them again until she heard the legends of the Divide. The Divide, where the two messengers, the two couriers, fought beneath an ancient flag at the edge of the world. You heard of the Sierra Madre Casino. We all have. The legend, the curses. Some foolishness about it lying in the middle of a city of dead. A city of ghosts, buried beneath a blood-red cloud. A bright, shining monument, luring treasure hunters to their doom. An illusion that you can begin again. Change your fortune. Finding it, though, that's not the hard part. It's letting go. in the night, invisible fires of radiation scorching it from within and without. It is said a man still walked its streets with a tattered jacket and old world flag etched on the back. He remained there, perhaps as punishment for the scars he left on the wastes, or a reminder of a history he could not forget. For Ulysses, his journey was over. The courier had been the end of his road. As for the courier, he turned his back on his home for the second time and made his way back, navigating the treachery of the Divide. Tunnelers and the marked men avoided the lone figure as if recognizing the courier's right to passage, or out of fear. The courier walked until he stood again upon the edge of the divide, the last road he would walk before the second battle for Hoover Dam. There, beside his feet, was a final package from one courier to another, a footlocker bearing a gift and a message. But that message, it is something for couriers to carry and for them alone. The lights flickered across the divide, reminders that the old world histories persist and find meaning in the present. It said, war, war never changes. Men do, through the roads they walk. And this road has reached its end. Israel tell us in its own sweet time. And so the courier who had cheated death in the cemetery outside Good Springs cheated death once again, and the Mojave Wasteland was forever changed. The New California Republic celebrated its second victory at Hoover Dam, establishing definitive control over the entire Mojave wasteland. Soon after, they negotiated terms to annex the Strip, Freeside, and many surrounding communities. The Mojave wasteland, at long last, had entirely fallen under the NCR's banner. The Courier 
fair and even-handed in his dealings throughout the wasteland, was honored by the NCR for his support of the military at Hoover Dam. He was presented with the Golden Branch, the highest civilian decoration given by the Republic. Tabitha and Rhonda went east, through Caesar's land. Occasionally, tales of their exploits found their way back west, though few believed them. Eventually, the stories concerning the duo were collected and published, and proved to be quite popular with children. Invigorated by his travels with the courier, Raul once more took up his guns in memory of his lost Rafaela. Soon after, the Mojave was filled with tales of the ghost vaquero who hunts down those who prey on the weak. With the help of the gunrunners, the boomers developed a healthy trading relationship with the NCR. Eventually, the boomers began wandering out into the wasteland while still preventing outsiders from entering Nellis. The Brotherhood and the NCR in the Mojave Wasteland declared an official truce, despite continued hostilities between the two in the West. As per their agreement, the NCR handed over all suits of salvaged power armor, and in return, the Brotherhood helped patrol I-15 and Highway 95. Despite her departure from the group, the Brotherhood's peace treaty with NCR came as some relief to Veronica. Though she remained friendly with surface patrols, she was never again permitted to enter the bunker she once called home. Fearing for the safety of anyone she associated with, she continued her solitary life as a scavenger. But reports would emerge from Mojave scientists and social workers of old equipment miraculously repaired and research notes mysteriously completed. Their leaders destroyed by the courier, the fiends scattered throughout the wasteland. Without the organization of Motor Runner, Cook Cook, Violet, and Driver Nephi, they were easy prey. After the NCR's victory at the dam, in part thanks to follower medical support, NCR allowed the followers to care for refugees as they see fit. Old Mormon Fort expanded its services and was able to aid more people, becoming a refuge for the less fortunate citizens of New Vegas. Though Arcade had not hoped for an NCR victory, he was proud of his role in the defense of Hoover Dam against the forces of Caesar's Legion. Unfortunately, when word spread that Arcade was once a member of the Enclave, he was forced out of the followers of the Apocalypse. Pursued by bounty hunters, NCR Rangers, and the Brotherhood of Steel, Arcade pushed deep into the Eastern Plains and was never heard from again. Good Springs saw more trade along I-15 after NCR gained control of the Mojave Wasteland, but with that came a heavy burden of the Republic's taxes. Some old-timers, unable to handle the cost, were forced to move on, grumbling all the while. Cass survived to see the NCR flag flying proud over Hoover Dam, and thought for a moment, this is what a hero must feel like. She was about to tell the courier not to get too proud of himself. Then she figured, he knew that already. That night, Cass kicked in the door of his room to celebrate, only to find the man on the bed was an NCR soldier whose barracks had been destroyed. He was cute though, so after having her way with him, she got the hell out, leaving an empty whiskey bottle as a note. As she walked along the dam in the night, she felt drunk, content, and happy to be alive. Which to her, was the whole point of it all. During the Battle of Hoover Dam, the Great Khans quickly evacuated Red Rock Canyon and headed north and east into the plains of Wyoming. There, they reconnected with the followers of the Apocalypse and rebuilt their strength. Bolstered by ancient knowledge of governance, economics, and transportation, they carved a mighty empire out of the ruins of the Northwest. Thanks to the Courier and Lily, a cure for the Nightkin schizophrenia was found shortly after Dr. Henry's experiment concluded. Nightkin and other super mutants in the wasteland flocked to Jacobstown, and the town became known as a haven where a mutant could find peace. Lily continued to take her medicine at half doses, and although she remembered her grandchildren, her mind remained muddled and confused. Eventually, she parted ways with the courier and traveled west, seeking the remnants of her past. After the NCR victory at Hoover Dam, the temporary truce between them and the Kings blossomed into a full-scale relief effort for the people. 
While the NCR made repeated entreaties that Freeside join the Republic, the King steadfastly maintained their independence. After Ray's brain was transplanted into Rex's cybernetic body, it took Rex some time to adjust to the old scrapyard dog's memories. Eventually, Rex's mind settled peacefully, melding his own memories with that of long travels with old Lady Gibson. Shaped up by the courier's advice, the misfits distinguished themselves during the Legion's attack on Camp Golf. Mags was finally promoted to sergeant, and the rest of the misfits received an official commendation. They continued to serve with distinction for many years. Though Novak was a low-priority target for the Legion, many of Novak's citizens died in its defense. In the weeks that followed, several bright followers returned to Novak to help restore its defenses, allowing it to remain independent of NCR. Looking for a place where he could be of some use, Boone found himself re-enlisting with his old unit. Though his regrets remained in his thoughts, they coalesced into a purpose, and Boone embraced it. He spent his leave time hunting down slavers in the desert, his first recon beret the last thing they never saw. With the dam firmly in their grasp, the NCR turned its attention towards wresting the correctional facility from Powder Ganger hands. The Powder Gangers are no match for the battle-hardened troops of the NCR, and summary execution awaited the Powder Gangers who managed to survive. Cook dead. Powder Gangers at Vault 19 fell apart. Those who weren't destroyed by the courier fled into the hills or attempted to work their way back through the Mojave Wasteland. After Hoover Dam, NCR helps rebuild Prim as a major stopping point on the Long 15. Though Prim citizens chafe under NCR's taxes, they benefit greatly from the increased protection and merchant traffic. Defying Chief Hanlon's worst fears, NCR's rangers persevered and distinguished themselves during the Second Battle of Hoover Dam. The rangers, along with NCR's many troopers, shared the glory of victory. Hanlon wisely stayed out of the spotlight, crediting General Oliver's leadership for NCR's success. After a brief fanfare, Hanlon stepped down as chief and returned to the peace and quiet of his ranch outside of Reading. After their bold arrival at Hoover Dam, the remnants disappeared as quickly as they came. Legends of their power spread throughout the Southwest, a reminder of why people once feared the sight of vertebrates in the sky. And so the Courier's Road came to an end, for now. In the new world of the Mojave Wasteland, fighting continued, blood was spilled, and many lived and died just as they had in the old world. Because war, war never changes. more than the wealth in your hands. 